Hello and welcome to this brief video on how to set up a PHP development environment for Symfony using Windows 10 and WSL2. WSL2 is a new feature that's coming to Windows in May 2020. What it essentially allows you to do is run an embedded Linux kernel within your Windows installation. This is interesting on many levels, but in this blog post video, we are focusing on using it for web development, uh, specifically for running Easy Platform, RDXP, on WSL2. It's a Symfony 5 application, so it should run pretty much the same for any other similar software. So the first step is to enable the infrastructure for WSL2. I've taken some steps here uh, to move forward a bit faster by already installing the components, but what you technically need to do is install the Windows Linux subsystem and the virtual machine platform that it runs on top of. So once you have these in place, uh, you will get uh, the WSL command in PowerShell. Before we go ahead and install uh, a Linux distribution on, on this machine, I want to make sure that we are using the second iteration of WSL. So there's two versions of WSL. This one is the one that's coming now. It's completely different from WSL 1. So let's just make sure we enable it. Sorry. So I will copy this one. And then let's paste it here. So you can also find some information on the differences here if you are used to using WSL1. So here now we have enabled that. Uh, the next step was for us to go to the Windows Store and get a Linux installation. Because the Linux installations are quite large, I took the liberty of downloading Ubuntu one already beforehand, so it's already installed. It'll take some minutes, I think it's 400 megabytes or so to install. So then if we do the launch, it will set up your machine. So the next step is then to create a new account. This is exclusive for your Windows installation, I mean the WSL installation that you have here. So I'll create a new account for myself. Set a password like this. And now I have an installation of Ubuntu running embedded within my uh, Windows 10 installation. Uh, I can see cat uh, or etc issue to see it's Ubuntu uh, 2004 LTS release. I chose this one just because it has a good uh, set of packages for running Easy Platform. So before we continue, there's one step to take again, because this is still pre-release software. What I want to do is avoid a known bug uh, with re re regards to real-time clock and hold the libc6 package uh, using apt because in inside the installation you will use the tooling which comes from your linux distribution to manage any packages and so on so what i did now to avoid the bug at the time of the recording is the libc uh, put on hold uh, so the next step is to do an update is to make sure our core packages are functioning, uh, that's pretty standard, then I'll do an upgrade just to make sure we have all the standard dependencies downloaded from the latest to the latest versions and the latest patches. So here, what we have now is this. Uh, the next step is then to install the uh, dependencies that are needed for Easy Platform. So I'll just copy this entry, and then did I? Oh, I have it here, like this, and then again a standard apt package, downloading, installing the PHP packages.
okay, and then we should have PHP 7.4.3 installed from standard uh, Ubuntu repositories. The next step, I deliberately left it uh, different, separate. So in this case, you could choose to use different databases, but I choose to use in this case uh, just MariaDB. So sorry, no, not here. A bit too many windows open. I'll just close all these windows and then proceed with installing MariaDB. You can also, by the way, find here in the task manager how things are running. Everything is running in this VMM container, so you can see it using memory and so on. So in WSL1, you could see the process individually, but that's a bit different now. So here uh, we have now added the, the MySQL or MariaDB in this case. So let's uh, go ahead and run it. And then connect to it here. So next, let's create user and then allow all the permissions to our database. This is pretty standard stuff like this. So then now we have a database set up. Then let's verify that we can connect to the database like this. Yes, everything is working okay. So we have the MariaDB database working. That's perfect. So we have everything we need. We also have the Composer Packet Manager, which is the PHP standard or de facto standard uh, packet manager, which should be also a recent release from earlier this March. So then finally, uh, because we're using the Symfony Encore, which uses Webpack for front-end asset management, we'll install Yarn as well, uh, which is a JavaScript package manager, which also then installs uh, Node.js on, on here. So if you need to do some, some other stuff uh, related to PHP, you can do that just as well here. Let me just uh, copy this and then King. Get these and then install the package. Run an update again and then install yarn. Now you can see it's installing Node as well. And again, everything is here. You can see how much memory is being used. Currently a total of uh, was one gigabyte. I can maybe put it here. So we can see it, it's running there. So yarn yarn B, we've got 1.224. So that's all working fine. So what we didn't include in this package was the uh, Symfony, uh, sorry, the web server. So in this case, what I want to use is the Symfony web server. So the Symfony web server is an, a standalone application which allows you to uh, run easily just any project without too much uh, configuration regarding PHP and so on. So again, I'll just install this uh, package, then I will install it globally and then sudo like this and then uh, what symphony uh, does is i can run symphony serve i think server run or serve symphony serve and this will run a local web server so in this case now from my root directory i can access it from windows using the port uh, 8000 uh, there's nothing there uh, because it's just in the root of my home directory, so that's that's fine. You can also look into uh, SSL and TLS uh, if you want to, and so on. But going back to here, so the next step is installing our, our application. So we can install the open source uh, version of Easy Platform. 
we can start by cloning the uh, the meta repository in GitHub. Okay, and beta put up there. Copy. So cloning to easy platform. Okay, and now we have our report metro repository downloaded. So then I will go into the easy platform and then if I get check git tag and I'll go and find the latest version. The latest version is uh, 303. So git checkout v303. And then I'll use composer install to uh, install all the dependencies for our application. Again, if you want to follow up just for fun here, you can you can do that. This will take a while to, to download the packages and so on. Um, but yeah, you can obviously also open other shell windows into your window. So if you would like to go and see it, see from top what's going on. So uh, top is working in, in another, another, another window installing uh, everything that's re required for easy platform. Yeah, but everything, if you explore the WSL, it's a standard Linux installation with some integration into Windows. So fundamentally, it is a Linux installation which is running there. So this is different from what WSL 1 was, which was something which translated the Linux calls to Windows calls on the fly. Yeah, there's still some tasks that need to run regarding asset generation and so on. Okay, and then we're done installing. So next what we can do is maybe run a composer, uh, sorry, symphony serb to see what's going on. Uh, Symphony uh, also uh, integrates or finds out the correct PHP version and runs that. So now we should have something a bit different here. Okay, we get an exception. Uh, this is regarding the configuration of the database. Uh, this is because our default configuration is not correct. So what I can do is I will start the Symfony server in daemon mode. So it will run in the background. Uh, and then I will just go into the NV. You should use the local NV. Don't do as I do, do as I say. So we should have the database configuration somewhere here. So our database user was easy p password was wsl to easy p i think let's double check maybe i can set this one wsl to easy p that's correct there and then database name is correct local host if you want to connect externally then you will need to connect with an ip i mean from the windows host and that's something which is more out of scope for this video okay so let let's see then now if i refresh database error okay so now the connection is okay but our database is empty so what we need to do is run the installation script which generates a standard database so it's here using the easy platform symphony command it installs database and hopefully now we have something running here we have an installation of easy platform 3 running and then if we take a look at here for example in the php info you can see this is running on the Microsoft provided Linux kernel, which is, 
I guess, somewhat remarkable. And then finally, if you want to access files, so in this case, if we take a look at this one, uh, these are uh, template files here. If I look at the debugger uh, here, you can find this is under theme, standard, full, welcome page, and so on. If I want to edit these, I can access easily, for example, if I open Explorer EXE, it will spring up uh, the directory structure from my home directory in, in, in the Linux shell. And then maybe I'll open Notepad. And then I'll file, I'll find the template that I was looking for here, themes, standard, page layout, so this was page layout, let's not modify that one, but the one in the full, which itself doesn't really matter. I'll choose the welcome page, and then let's just add some text there. For example, here, hello from WSL2, and then we'll save that one. And because we're running in development mode, there should be nothing here. Uh, so anyway, this is now, you can see how it's running. And technically anything that you would like to run for PHP development, you can do in this manner. To find out all of the commands, you can head over to www.ibexa.co and the blog post. There should be also a shortcut for it. So ibexa.co wsl2-php. You can find it here, except not yet. Thank you. Bye.